In a world first, a neurosurgeon in Australia has removed a worm found alive in a woman's brain. The creature measured around eight centimeters or three inches, and it's understood to be the larva of an Australian native roundworm, not previously known to be a human parasite. It was discovered during a biopsy operation last summer. Details of the shock find have been revealed in a new article published by the experts involved. The 64-year-old patient had been admitted to hospital after experiencing forgetfulness and worsening depression over three months. Well, we can talk now to the neurosurgeon at Canberra Hospital who discovered that worm, Dr. Hari Priya Bandi. Welcome to DW. Dr. Bandi, before we get to the significance of the worm, I'd like to first ask you to simply tell us about the moment of discovery, a shock, I take it. Absolutely. Um, neurosurgery is exceptionally planned. It requires um, imaging beforehand. We very rarely find something that we're not expecting to find. And during this case where we did an open biopsy of the skull, we'd opened up the normal tissues that we, as we usually do, we found abnormal brain. It looked a little bit discolored. My junior doctor had taken off some, some more minor samples, a few millimetres, and they didn't look particularly abnormal. But this poor woman had been suffering for so long, and I thought it was really important to get her an answer. So we followed the stereotactic map that we'd created beforehand and could actually dissect using fine dissectors where the abnormality was on the MRI beforehand. And we did that and found, oh, gosh, it's behaving like a tumour, um, whatever this is. And then I used tumour-holding forceps and lifted out something that definitely was not what I was expecting, a linear, squiggling line um, and my junior doctor said, is that an artery? Because that's what it looked like. But I said, it's not an artery. We're nowhere near any artery. And I noticed it was moving and immediately went, please just get it out of my forceps. Gosh, just get it out of the forceps. So we rapidly put it into a pathology pot and it was a vigorously wiggling worm. <laughs> Can I see you have a model of the brain in your hand. Can you just hold that up a little higher and point to where you found that worm in the brain? Yeah, apologies, this is just a rudimentary model of the cranium. And so basically this lesion um, that this lady had was found on the right-hand side. So her story was many months prior and actually a year mm. almost prior, she had lung lesions, liver lesions, lots of tests, nothing right. found. Okay. Um, and she finally had these symptoms and this is where we biopsied it, through the skull mm. using this fine surgery where you can actually localise. Now, this parasitic worm that you found is usually found in snakes. How did it end up in this woman's brain? So this lady lives on the coast, um, so southeast coast of Australia, and she lives around a region, there are the lakes, where there is a green material called warrigal grass or warrigal green, similar very much to spinach. And she normally collects that, prepares it appropriately, washes them um, and boils them and cooks them in her normal cooking. And we suspect that that might be the source where this is entered because when we found this worm, it was red, wriggling, and a veterinary scientist who saw the picture of the worm immediately said that is a python worm because it was a nematode, it's bright red, it has a very characteristic feature. And so we traced it back. Carpet snakes are very much endemic in that area. They travel over these warrigal green grasses and likely has deposited some faeces on these grasses. This um, worm has been described between snakes as faeces and within mammals and small rodents. Right. And that's the normal life cycle, but okay. never human. So you found it in the brain. You described removing it with your forceps. Can we assume that the worm had been like moving around through the brain? Yeah, we can, and we have imaging of it. So what happened was initially she had lots of lung symptoms, liver symptoms, abdominal pains, but then she progressed earlier last year to have um, more um, depressive symptoms, just not feeling herself at all mm. and feeling out of control. Very frontal is what you'd say. And so the psychiatrist, before escalating her treatment, decided to do a CT scan. On the CT scan, you can clearly see something at the surface of the right frontal brain, her non-dominant lobe, because she's a right-handed lady. And on that surface, the CT initially, 
her following MRI showed it was changing. The subsequent MRI that was part of our planning was showed that it was changing and moving. So okay. this was changing and moving, but only in retrospect can you see, oh, you can see that little squiggle of the line that now we can appreciate as a worm because there's no <laughs> medical imaging that shows us anything similar. So sure. it's easy in retrospect. Um, you can see yeah. it moving. And, and finally, uh, I'm just. Uh, what about the patient? Um, you know, you described her as having had uh, symptoms of forgetfulness, um, depression. Uh, how is how is the patient doing? So she, after suffering this really long illness with no answers and not getting any better, um, was really pleased to have an answer, um, to have a diagnosis. But more importantly than that, not just a diagnosis, but now potential treatments. So now we've been able to cure her of this parasite. While it's not been described in humans before, certainly treatments for parasites of this nature have been around for a long time. And the fantastic team at the Canberra Hospital, um, the infectious diseases doctors, haematologists, immunologists all came together and were able to provide an appropriate regime. And she's doing well. On imaging now, we can't see in the brain any progression of any other lesions elsewhere. Mm. The lung, the liver lesions are all settling down. So she's doing well from this horrific time that she's had. Well, that's, that's very good to hear. Uh, so you are a, a scientist, you're a neurosurgeon. Uh, so of course you approach this from a scientific point of view, but I wanna ask you, are you kind of like, I don't know, are you afraid of slithery things? Do snakes and worms kind of get under your skin as it were? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I'm a gardener, but I'm not a very good one. And I am not fond of snakes or worms. Um, I know my six-year-old definitely very fond of them and he loved this story. To me, it's uh, terrifying. Surgery is a very controlled environment. Neurosurgeons deal with control um, and in very predictable ways. So something moving, being removed from the brain is horrific to me. And for a while, I like lifting anything with my tumor holding forceps caused me some stress. That time has passed. Okay. Retelling the story has made it come back. But um, yeah, it's definitely not what you'd expect. And it's not something that I'm used to at all. Dr. Hari Priya Bandi, thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, that was Dr. Hari Priya Bandi, the neurosurgeon at Canberra Hospital.